All right then, my friends. So in the last lesson, we created a stateful widget and a state object down here for that stateful widget. We created some state inside that for the strength and sugars. And then these functions right here, which are triggered by these buttons, inside those, we set the state and update those values. And when we call this method, this function right here, set state, it triggers the build function to rerun. So we update these values within it. Okay. Now that's good. We've got these values working, but I'd like to do something a little bit different with them rather than just output them right here. What I'd like to do is output a number of images based on the values of those pieces of state. So say for example, strength was three, right? I would want to output three of these things inside the row, three of these uh, coffee bean images. If the sugars value was two, I'd want to output two sugar cube images. Now, in order to do that, we have to somehow figure out a way of looping through how many numbers of strength or sugars we have. So if this is three, we'd have to have a for loop maybe that cycles through a bit of code three times and outputs a coffee bean image each time. So how do we do that? Well, we can actually use logic like for loops or if statements inside lists in Dart. So we could do a little for loop right here and say, look, for as long as we have some kind of counter that is less than this number, then I want to output an image. All right, so that's what we're gonna do in this lesson. So then what I'm gonna do is just get rid of this text widget right here where we output the strength dynamically because we're not gonna use that anymore. Instead, we're just gonna denote the strength by having a sequence of images, right? Okay, so we want to kind of embed this within a for loop. So what we can do inside a list is create a for loop and for loops in Dart are pretty much the same as for loops in other programming languages. We just have some kind of variable that we initialize right here, which is gonna keep track of how many times we're running this loop. So we'll set that off to be zero to begin with, then a semicolon, then the condition. So we say for as long as I is less than, well, it needs to be less than strength, all right? So we only wanna output an image for as long as I is less than the current strength value. So let's say less than strength then a semicolon, and then finally, after each iteration, we want to do something, we want to add one to i, so we say i plus plus. And then, when we're inside a list right here, we don't need to use curly braces like this, we don't do that. Instead, we just put this after the for loop. Now, what I like to do is just indent that a little bit so we can see all the stuff within that for loop that we're going to output, right? Now, after the comment right here, then it kind of ends the for loop. So we're saying output this widget right here, inside this for loop for as many times that we iterate this for loop. Does that make sense? And then when it hits the comma after that, we're not outputting this inside the for loop. So the indent doesn't actually matter. It could be over here, but I like to indent it just so that at a glance, I can see that this is the thing that we're outputting for this for loop, okay? All right, so let us save that now and see if this works. And now we can see the strength over here, we have five coffee beans. If I increase this, it goes back to one, then two, then three, four, five, back to one, and so forth. So that's working, awesome. So what I'd like to do is something very similar for the sugars down here. So let's get rid of that text widget. Instead, we have the for loop, indent this right here, and we need to change this to sugars instead. And let's do a little space so we can see where it ends. And that's pretty much it. So save that, and now we get all these sugars as well. All right, now there's one little thing that I wanna do extra for the sugars. And that is, if we get to five and then increase again, remember we said we can go to zero, right? For sugars, because it's probable that some people have zero sugars in their coffee. So instead of just showing nothing here, if this value sugars is ever zero, I would like to output a text message, maybe a text widget that says no sugars. So we can do that just like we can use a for loop inside a list, we can use an if statement. So we can come above this and say if sugars is equal to zero, then I wanna output some kind of text widget. So I'm gonna indent const and then text. And inside this text, we'll just say no sugars. Like that, and then a comma at the end of it. So now we're saying output this text widget if sugars is zero, but if it's not zero, then this won't show on the screen. So let's save it and preview. Okay, I've done that wrong. I've done it inside the coffee. So um, let's grab that 
and come down to where the sugars is. My mistake. Paste it in right here instead. All right, save that. And now we can see no sugars. If we go up, we don't see that text widget. We just see the sugar cubes and then no sugars when it's zero. Awesome.